All week, the streets of Chicago have been filled with these sights and sounds. Protesters in the Windy City marching against the NATO summit, which is set to begin this weekend. Mostly peaceful and sometimes strange. We're setting up a living room in front of Citibank. Yet, these images are child's play in comparison to 1968. You see, the Democratic National Convention was in town, and the Chicago police clashed violently with protesters. Today, it's different. A more strategic and technical time for police. For the FBI, this international event is high stakes. This is probably the largest event that we've been involved in. There, there have been no credible threats that we've developed regarding the NATO summit or the city of Chicago this weekend. And in this undisclosed location outside of Chicago is the multi-communication center. We can't really call it a war room, but what we can tell you is that a multitude of agencies will be here monitoring activities in and around Chicago and then relaying any developments to those folks that are in the field. Like the 3,100 Chicago police officers guarding the downtown streets, protecting citizens, delegations in the thousands, and heads of state. Inside this very wired and secret location, officials from more than 40 separate agencies, like the Secret Service and FBI, will be monitoring everything. You know, we have real-time feeds coming in from cameras in various locations uh, from the agencies here in Chicago. We are going to be operational 24 hours starting on Friday uh, until the summit is over. And that is Monday. In the meantime, preparations for hosting NATO, a 28-country military alliance summit, is no small order. Street barricades are being erected. Public transportation slowed or even canceled. A large no-fly zone above the city and in general a hope for peace. A point that the police are efforting. Our ultimate goal is uh, that it'll be a non-event, it'll be a boring uh, event that there won't be anything happening that means everything's going smooth. Hosting the NATO summit is risky business. If protesters get ugly they become the story and the city may take another black eye like a 1968. But if all goes well, then President Barack Obama's home city will come out looking like a picture postcard for large-scale international events. At this point, only time will decide. Robert Gray, Associated That's an odd little plane. Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. My website is ggnonline.com and ddarko2012-2013 on my YouTube channels. So, it's uh, that was child's play back uh, when you saw that guy, grown man on his ass, uh, getting beat with uh, batons by a swarm of cops. They were there to protect them. They, see, he didn't know it as he was getting clubbed over the head that they were actually there to protect the citizens. Um, so, just really just a load of crap uh, with that AP video saying that they're there to protect the citizens. Well, no, they're there to protect these international corporate elites, these corporations, uh, these technocrats uh, that are going to meet in the mega city, the mega region of the Great Lakes, the Great Lakes mega city, and uh, they're going to talk about uh, how they're going to rape and pillage Afghanistan and other countries uh, with your tax dollars. So, and they don't want you to really to get too uh, to get too um, agitated or or hostile. And uh, actually, they do, right? He said that one police commissioner was saying, you know, hopefully everything will go smooth. Well, they don't really want it to go smooth because if it goes smooth, then they won't get as many funds uh, from your money as far as tax dollars to fund this police state, to fund black helicopters flying overhead, to fund FBI agents and uh, God knows what else, right? Uh, everyone that's going to be working overtime is all being paid by the citizens, so who's being protected here? So if the protesters, uh, they probably won't get violent. They usually don't. They'll be peaceful. But uh, that's what I'm saying. There's going to be, quote, anarchists. There's going to be people getting violent, and those are going to be sh sh uh, 
Chicago police officers getting paid time and a half, um, possibly even army reserves doing little psych psychological operations. So just really a, tra a tragedy because it's been done uh, just over and over so many times. So, But it says here, Rahm Emanuel, no handcuff policy. So, I mean, they're really just kind of with open arms, the police state, just kind of like, you know, uh, you know, don't worry, journalists, no, we don't have a no handcuff policy in that. Uh, for you covering the NATO summit in Chicago it goes on it says whether I like what you write or whether I like what you report you have an essential role in uh, telling the truth right it says here uh, to have a democracy when you have freedom truth has to exist the mayor said according to the Chicago Sun Times so but it goes on there and it says it came on uh, about a week after two Chicago journalists, NBC Chicago's Dante Williams and WGN reporter, were detained and then handcuffed by police while attempting to cover the shooting death of a six-year-old. Uh, neither journal uh, journalist was ultimately arrested. So, uh, you know, I think there was actually a journalist that was killed at one of the G8 summits a while back. And maybe it wasn't the G8 summit, but basically whatever globalist meeting uh, that was being carried out. Uh, you know, one of them was actually hit. Maybe it was in Britain, but it says here uh, that in the exchange caught on the video, one officer told reporters, your First Amendment rights can be terminated if you're creating a scene or whatever. So so those are the uh, black and whites, the Masonic black and white squares uh, kind of uh, deciding what is what and what is reality and what is uh, true justice for you. But when it's all said and done, there's no credible threat to the NATO summit. So just like the London Olympics, well, we don't actually have any threats or, you know what I mean? But uh, we're going to just do whatever we can to protect, uh, to protect the sheeple. And as journalists are getting handcuffed and detained, and Rahm Emanuel promises that they're not going to do that this time, free speech has been strangled by a law that bans insults and is abused by overzealous police and prosecutors. Campaigners say public order act is unclear, has resulted in a string of controversial arrests. Groups uh, join forces to have insulting words or behavior phrase removed from legislation. So uh, former shadow Home Secretary David Davis, nobody likes to be insulted, but nor does anyone have the right not to be insulted. The U.S. House passes $643 billion defense bill. So that's right, um, $643 billion Federal Reserve notes are going to be uh, rolling out of the presses from the Federal Reserve. You're going to pay for the interest, and um, you're going to work it off, and it's going to do what? It's going to go towards the defense of your way of life, which is being a slave. It's going to go on the offense and drone bomb people in Afghanistan so that they can start drawing out oil and rare minerals. Now we have bill to end indefinite detention fails in house. A judge may have found an unconstitutional um, law that allows people to be held indefinitely without trial by military, but the house voted Friday to keep it anyway. So on Wednesday, the federal judge uh, found that the law violates rights to free speech and due process, but House members defended it, ultimately voting 238 to 182 against an amendment guaranteeing civilian trials for any terrorism suspect arrested in the United States. Then we have from March 15, 2012, a little bit older, but Occupy Miami raided SWAT team draws weapons on children. Dozens of police equipped with shotguns and assault rifles stormed a Miami, Florida apartment and drew their weapons on peaceful protesters and children with the local Occupy Wall Street campaign. It says the owner of the apartment building, an Occupy protester, allowed some members of the Occupy Miami to live there following the eviction of protesters from their camp on the 31st of January. During the raid, protesters claimed police drew their weapons on children, forced a 57-year-old diabetic woman onto the ground, and allegedly harassed at least one individual, says Rami Mahoud, during an informal interrogation, quote, they are calling us terrorists, but what I saw today was demons pointing guns at us, end quote. They terrified us, again in quotes. A California patient jailed for not taking his medication, says here, can you be arrested for not taking medication if you answered uh, in the negative, you'd be wrong, says California. Eugenics officials have petitioned uh, for the arrest and prosecution of Mr. Rodriguez, a Stockton drug user who has an active case of pulmonary tuberculosis. After refusing to take his meds on multiple occasions, he was arrested. So it says here he's been charged with refusing to comply with a tuberculosis order. 
So it's a public health risk, which is the same reason for uh, forced vaccinating people in school and that. Explains in other places that uh, patients aren't exactly arrested for not taking medication, uh, but instead a judge can order them to be detained at a medical facility if there's proof they continue to engage in at-risk behavior. There we go, that at-risk behavior. Kind of like insulting behavior, the public order in the UK. They're insulting the eugenicists. They're insulting the pharma companies by not taking their eugenics. It says here, Greece downgraded deeper into junk. And most of us already know that credit rating on Greece's government debt was downgraded deeper into junk bond territory on Thursday. And just one quick note, I just love how they always say how they really care about the public's health at risk behavior. I'll say this many, many times over and over again. They're fucking spraying us every fucking day with chemicals and they're putting fluoride in water and they're forcing people to take vaccines especially children they don't give a shit about people's health the public health they're trying to kill them that is their goal to dumb the children down in the schools and to vaccinate them to get them uh drink an aspartame whatever to drink the cr crappy gmo food they're actually teaching them indoctrinating them in uh that uh in Disneyland and that what oh this is uh the future the future gmo food that's going to sterilize you and have your guts uh, falling apart. And they care so much about obesity, the fight for obesity, right? That was Michelle Obama's big thing. Yet Michelle Obama's actually, what, making fun out of Oprah for being fat. So it says here, Italy deploys 20,000 to protect sensitive targets. I've covered this before. This is about this. Uh, I just don't buy any of this. Italy deploys 20,000 to protect sensitive targets. Said to increase uh, security in 14,000 sites, assigned bodyguards to protect 550 individuals after a nuclear energy company official was shot and letter bombs directed to the tax collection agency. Hmm. So this is kind of why I think it's bullshit, or these guys are calling themselves anarchists and they don't know what it really means. The anarchists, the informal, uh, it's a group, it's a group, right? A group of anarchists who are supposed to be individuals all about non-violence, non-coercion, right? A group calling itself the Informal Anarchist Federation last week claimed responsibility for this shooting. So, yeah, you know, it's like with the population, that video with the professor saying, you can't use population control, right? Use sustainability, you know, because the word's just been tainted. Well, that's how the word anarchism or anarchist, it's been tainted. It's been tainted by the powers that be because they know that it's very powerful. Um, it's a very powerful idea. So they have to uh, associate violence and stuff like that uh, with anarchists. And so that's why the Interior Ministry has deployed 20,000 law enforcement officers to protect the individuals in sensitive sites. I wonder if they're bankers. I wonder who these people are. In, in addition, 4,200 military personnel have already been assigned throughout Italy and will be redeployed according to new priorities. So just like the UK, uh, building up and stuff like that, uh, all the security in London uh, for the London Olympics. It may not be for the London Olympics, but for the collapse of the Euro, this may have to do with the collapse of the Euro and not so much a bunch of united anarchists. So, uh, cost of household energy soars in the UK. New study says the cost of household energy in Britain has risen more than five times faster than the household income in 2004, since 2004. Then in the last four years, there was a six-fold increase in the number of Americans age uh, 55 and older who have been unemployed for six months or longer. So this was the same group that was out protesting during the civil rights movement and that in the 60s. Uh, they're concerned now about their retirement income. Homelessness is on the rise in Britain. New report shows a number of homeless people in Britain is now on the rise while the problem is to be exasperated by more cuts to the housing benefit in 2013, the euro's survival requires political unions. Remember I said, instead of using your dollars and, and just getting away from this political system to help cause it, no, we need a, a political union. That's what's required to save the euro that was doomed to begin with. The U.S. Congressman Walter Jones moves to impeach Obama expressing the sense of Congress that the use of offensive military force, but it's defensive, right? We're on the defense. No, it's offensive uh, by the president. And our fewer without prior and clear authorization of an act of Congress constitutes an impeachable high crime and misdemeanor under Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution. Even the Arizona Secretary of State threatens to remove Obama from the ballot. And this is unless he receives confirmation from Hawaii that it is that it has a valid birth certificate on file for him. The next up, born... 
Oops, born in Kenya, Obama's literary agent misidentified his birthplace in 91. It could be the so-called birther issues source. He's being White House is being criticized for altering presidential biography page. Kennedy's and Obama's at war? Oh, Kennedy's now dead. Casualty.